Hey guys, this is a quick fill-in video while I'm working on my next Mad Max video. What I have here is a 1969 whipped creamer. The car's paint and plastic is in really good shape, but the metal on the base is heavily oxidized. This is very common for red lines that have been stored in a garage or in an attic for many years. Mattel didn't provide any protection to the bare metal on the bases, so they oxidize over time. One might get the idea from watching my videos that I take all the cars apart and restore them. However, most cars tend to be in this condition and taking them apart would hurt their value and not help it. So I'm going to show the procedure I go through to restore these cars without taking them apart. Restore is sort of a strong word here. Maybe the right thing to say is I'm freshening them up so they look good on display. I should state that there's always a group of people out there that frown on what I'm about to do. The issue revolves around the fact that once I'm done, there's no way to know that the car has been modified or restored. Uh, some feel this is deceitful as you could buy the fair condition cars and clean them up and then sell them as near mint or better condition than what you bought. I don't sell the cars, all I want is a nice looking whipped creamer for my collection. On the other end of the spectrum are people that dislike full restorations as you remove the play history of the car. And I can understand this. Uh, this method usually leaves this history in place, so it tends to make them happy. And last, you have those that believe that doing anything, especially restorations, to the car drops the value to zero. If you're in this camp, I recommend going to eBay, click on Advanced Search, type in Restored Redline, and then select Sold Listings, then run your search. After you're done looking through the hundreds of sold listings, you'll see that restoring redlines does not make them worthless. In fact, there's quite a cottage industry that's been created from restoring these cars. So now that I'm done with my boring rant, let's get to work on this car. I'll start by dipping it in my electro-polishing solution. This will remove the oxides from the metal without harming the plastics or paint. I have a full video on this setup you can watch if you're unfamiliar with this process. Here's what the base looks like after the oxides have been removed. Sometimes the electro-polishing will leave a light black residue on the metal. This can be removed with a toothbrush and some polishing compound, or even toothpaste. Now I'm going to remove the wheels. This model uses the cap type wheels, and they can be removed by using a sharp knife that you wedge between the cap and the wheel base to pry them off. The wheels on this car are in pretty good shape, so I'll keep them for future cars. This model, however, will be getting a new reproduction set. You might have noticed some sticker residue on the driver's side of the car. I'll use some Goo Gone to try to remove this residue. Goo Gone works really well for this, and the best part is it doesn't mess with the paint. So you can see here that the paint is in good shape, but it's not as shiny as it once was. This has to do with its age, but also because the car has a lot of toning, which is oxidation that happens underneath the paint. The plastic windshield is also in good shape with only small scratches. Just like a real car, I'm going to polish the paint to remove the haze and also polish the windshield to remove the small scratches. Keep in mind this will not remove any deep scratches in the plastic or in the paint. Here's how the car came out after I was done polishing it. The paint and windshield take on a much more shiny appearance now, and the car doesn't look as aged as it did before. Major scratches and paint chips are still present, of course, but they're offset by the look of the rest of the car. To get a better result than this, I would be required to take the car apart and fully restore it. For me, this mild restoration will work fine, as it's an original car that now looks good on display. The last step will be replace the wheels, which just snap on. So as you can probably guess, the difference between the original and refreshed car will not be as striking as a full restoration. Where the difference really shows up though is in the base, as the oxidized base looks dark and gray, while the restored base looks nice and shiny. The best part about this type of restoration is that it only takes a few minutes to do, unlike a full restoration, which can take hours or longer. You may be seeing this car again in the future. I've never taken one of these cars apart and would like to see how they go together. So be on the lookout for that. For those who are wondering, I am working on Mad Max 5 Part 3. So also be on the lookout for that. Let me know your thoughts on this car below. Also, what are your thoughts on restoring old cars and toys in general? 
My response to most people who are angry about it is that the car is mine to do with as I please. The response I get more and more is that, well, one day you'll die and then your collection will be sold off flooding the market with restored worthless cars. I find this to be a slippery slope argument at best, but I'm always curious what you guys think, so let me know below. And as always, thanks for watching.